Thank you, Rhea and Rosemary. And I'll just show you that last little sign as we were leaving. The church we were staying at uh, thanked us and all of Virginia Baptists for being there. And we still have many volunteers now. They're in the recovery phase and they're tearing out homes and getting them ready to rebuild. And I'm sure we may have others that, um, that go even from our church to help rebuild in the coming months. But as I thought about that experience and all that Fairview was doing, you know, along with, uh, with worship and grow, the other part of our mission statement is serve and go. And that's what this and all the other missions that we do is all about. And we do this so that we can share the love of Jesus Christ in our community and in our world. Uh, and I thought it would be important today to remind us of that part of our mission statement and to remind us um, one place in Scripture and many places in Scripture, we'll look at one of them today, of how that it is um, biblical, how that the New Testament church, the body of Jesus Christ, is asked to serve others and to go in Jesus' name. I'm going to be looking uh, and sharing together with you from 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 8, as we look at this a little bit this morning. Uh, Serving and ministering to others was seen from the early days of the Christian church as essential, as an essential calling, as, as an essential part of why the church of Jesus Christ was brought together. And in this particular uh, chapter, in fact, chapters 8 and 9 of 2 Corinthians, it's literally a fundraising letter written by Paul to the church at Corinth and to the churches surrounding Corinth. And Paul is trying to raise support, raise the consciousness, and uh, raise money for the poor, for those that have really suffered and are suffering back in Jerusalem. And he is collecting, trying to unite the hearts of all churches to help aid the need that's there in another part of the world. And although Paul never uses uh, the word money in this fundraising letter, he really is, uh, is talking about giving out of the grace you've received. He's asking for funds, but he's very good at it. He's not really just coming right out and say, take up an offering. He does that in Romans at a certain point, but not here. And Paul is, is asking them to remember these poor because Peter, James, and John and the rest of the disciples have asked Paul to do this. But in this fundraising letter, he is going to share what I believe why the church should serve and why the church should go in Jesus' name and why we need to continue to do that at Fairview. First of all, I think Paul would say that we, the church of Jesus Christ, we serve others and we go because it is a privilege to do so. It is a privilege to serve others and to go in Jesus' name. Looking at, at the first verses there in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know uh, about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. Paul is is encouraging the church at Corinth to give and to serve and to go by giving them the example of what the Macedonian churches have already done. Now, Macedonia were churches like Philippi and Colossae, and you can read his letters to them in other parts of the New Testament. But Paul says that these churches in Macedonia, 
the people of these churches were struggling. They weren't rich. They were being severely persecuted for being Christian. They were uh, being fired from their jobs. They were not able to find any other way, many of them, to support themselves. And because of that, many of them, the Christian churches there, were extremely poor. And in Paul, in fact, says they were so poor, but yet they begged him, they begged him to allow them to be a part of this offering that he was collecting. And because of the overwhelming joy they had of receiving the grace of Jesus Christ, because of the overwhelming joy they had of being saved and all that Jesus had done for them, they said, Paul, even though we're poor, we, we want to give all that we have for this cause because it is going to help us. It is going to give us strength. It is going to increase our discipleship and our love for Jesus. And we feel that it's just what Christ wants us to do. In other words, you see, what the Macedonian Christians are saying is what we found, that it is a privilege. It's a privilege for the Christian to give and to serve others in Jesus' name. It's a privilege for us. We gain so much from it as Christians and as believers in Jesus. One thing I notice when, when I arrive on a disaster call out and was no different with, with this one is all the familiar faces I have seen in previous deployments. You arrive, it's almost like a homecoming. And it's like Rhea says, we, we, we don't want disasters to occur, but boy, we sure enjoy seeing each other that have served on these last year or six months ago or even several years ago. And a common attitude is that everyone is overjoyed just to be able to serve again. In the midst of hardship, uh, they're, they're, they're overjoyed to serve again. In the midst of sleeping on cots for a week or an air mattress on the floor, they're overjoyed for serving again. Um, uh, in the midst of, uh, of, we take a shower in a shower trailer every day. I grab mine at night and, and try to get that quick five-minute shower just to get refreshed from the day but yet they're overjoyed to be in this situation to serve. They're overjoyed even in the midst of long hours of work. They count it as a privilege to be on mission in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what Macedonia is saying. As they beg Paul, even though they had nothing to give, to be a part of this effort. Now, I know that those in our church at Fairview, those, you ask anybody that serves in our Micah breakfast ministry, they get up twice a month, very early in the morning, and they serve um, 10, 20, 30 in the winter, 50, 60 homeless men and women breakfast. They love, do they have a joy in doing this? Talk about those that, that serve in our, for our food pantry. Talk to Nelson and Penny and those of you who come out twice a month to serve food to those that are hungry. You are involved and, and you feel the same way. Talk to those that, that of you that volunteer for the oyster roast to, to raise money for a needy person. Talk to those in our church that, that go to Peru twice uh, every, every two years and how they feel about that pastor and that orphanage and all of the work they do for God. Think about, and I hope you will, as, as, um, as Billy shared with you earlier, uh, that you'll be a part of Operation Inasmuch this Saturday. You know, it, it, it's a few hours of your day, but what a joy you'll receive. You know, you'll, if you do that one time, you'll be like the Macedonian churches. You'll be begging for opportunities to serve again. That's a part of being a Christian. God puts that into us. And it's one of the main reasons that, that we'll continue to serve and that we'll continue to go in Jesus' name. 
Second of all, Paul says that that Christians and churches serve and go because we follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 9. Paul says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. We serve our community in very humble ways. We give to missions with a humble heart. We give to Alma Hunt. We're almost reached our goal. It's wonderful. We take time and, and expense to go places far from our church because of the example Jesus gave us. What Paul is saying is this, and, and you know that Jesus has always been in heaven. He's God. That Jesus has always been divine. That Jesus um, has always been majestic. And Jesus did not have to come and rescue us from ourselves, did he? Jesus did not have to come and rescue us from our own sin, did he? We do not and do not deserve the grace of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus, the eternal life we, we receive from Jesus Christ. But we receive it anyway because Jesus chose, Jesus chose to stoop down to our level, didn't he? That's what Paul's saying. Jesus chose that. He didn't care that we had gotten ourselves into this mess on our own. He stooped down to become man. He didn't question our motives for our behavior. He did not research to determine if we, mankind, was some legitimate organization or, or a, a type of people to bother with. He decided because of his eternal love to become human. And he chose to die for our sins. And because he did that, at Fairview, we reach out and we, we minister to people that we discover in need. Period. That's all that needs to be. That's all that needs to be on their resume. People in need. We don't ask how the people we serve got themselves in this situation. We don't question the people that we help. We don't question their budgeting skills. We don't question their race. We don't question their politics. We don't question their worldview. Instead, if they're hungry, we feed them. If they're thirsty, we give them water. If they're in prison, we visit them. If they're naked, we clothe them. No questions asked. Why? Because that's what Jesus did for us. And that's what he commands us to do for others. We don't deserve anything we have, and those we help deserve everything that we can give them. I witnessed all kinds of people in North Carolina this past week after this terrible hurricane that came through and got a meal or came through and needed a prayer. They were rich and they were poor. There were, some were grateful and some were ungrateful. Some were very humble and some came very entitled. What do you got to give me for free? You know, but every single one of them, I counted it my privilege to serve because Jesus has served me with his grace and died for my sins when I don't deserve it. And he can ask me the same question, can he? We serve and we go, Paul says, because we're given a desire to serve and go by the Holy Spirit. Verse 10, Paul says, And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this manner. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work, so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it, according to your means. For if the willingness is there... The gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. It's the Holy Spirit 
in us that gives us the desire to give graciously. It's the Holy Spirit that puts inside of us the desire to serve others and to go in Jesus' name. I believe that uh, at some point, we as human beings, if it's just our own trumped-up morals, our own trumped-up desire, we ain't going. We ain't doing. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us that desire to do it. And you know, I've discovered in my own life that the closer I've become to Jesus through years, the more my desire to help others burns within me. It's almost an instinctive reaction to want to serve others in Jesus' name. It's almost an instinctive reaction to want to go in Jesus' name. And that doesn't come from me. It comes from the Spirit that I'm more and more aware of inside me. Paul encourages Corinth. He said, you started doing this year, a year ago. I want you to finish the work, finish the ministry, finish the missions that you begin. And I encourage we at Fairview to do the same. We have two other than the regular mission opportunities I've mentioned. We've mentioned today, October, we've got two great ways to serve and to go beyond these walls. Operation in as much on Saturday, places you can serve, and even a trunk or treat on the 31st of October. You know, you can do one of those. Bring your car out, pop the trunk, decorate it, hand out some candy, hand out some information about our church, um, share that God loves these families, or just rejoice in them that this is a family outing. Maybe one, maybe in their busy schedule, just one of the very few times a year, they go out with mom or mom and dad or dad, and they can be together, and we can share in that joy with them. Two easy opportunities this month to be involved, to go. Finally, Paul says, and I think this is important, in verses 13 through 15, we, we go and we serve, and he's encouraging Corinth to go and to serve because everyone matters to God. Every soul, that's what I heard Alma Hunt say one time, a soul is a soul. Every soul matters to Jesus. Paul says it like this in verse 13, Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but that there may be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. As it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. You see there, I told a couple of North Carolina Baptist disaster folk last week, I said, they said, oh, thanks for coming. I said, oh, don't worry about it. I said, when something happens in Virginia, I know you'll come running up here. Right now, we have much to give. But there may come a time when we have very little, like Rhea said, the storm could have hit us, couldn't it? And there'll be others that have much. And in Jesus' name, they're going to come. Paul says, we do this because every soul matters to God. Because sometimes we're rich and sometimes we're poor and sometimes we help and sometimes we need help. And so at Fairview, we'll continue to do so. We'll continue to worship as we did today in a wonderful way. We'll continue to grow in God's word and prayer. We'll continue to serve others no matter who they are. And we'll continue to go beyond these walls and beyond this community to share the love of Jesus. And I thank you for all that you've done to participate in all of this, not just this past week, but through these past years. You see, this is in our DNA. We've been doing this since 1923, and it's not going away. So let's serve and let's go in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for the opportunity to, um, to share this coming Saturday, to cook a breakfast, to 
offer a can of food to somebody through our food pantry, to go on the disaster field and, and hand out hygiene kits to those many, many cars that lined up every day. Lord, whatever you call us to do, um, Lord, uh, keep us um, just a perspective like Paul gave that Corinthian church, Lord, that, that um, everybody needs Jesus. And help us to be a part of your plan to share. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.